first real test. They have scraps, and well, we're right into it. London docks hard point. We're gonna start on board with Kenny TK. They finished two and zero yesterday. They beat Splice. They're able to beat Echo Fox in a pretty crazy series. So they had a great day one, and as you said, Red Reserve, they were able, able to take down Ep er, Epsilon. Let's see what they have. Now I'll tell you what, Joe, I cast it over both of those games that TK played yesterday, and they were not easy. I mean, both hard points that they played, one against Splice and both against Echo Fox, they were down early on, sometimes over 100 points. But somehow, some way, they find a way to come back into this one. So it's an easy prediction, I think, to make here that TK are going to find a way to go down 100, 120 points. But there's a chance that they could bring it back. But early on, they're starting to build a lead and already starting to think about this upcoming hard point as you have Pharaoh working alongside Enable trying to play for spawns as we're about to enter over towards the main street. I mean, look at Red Reserve right now. They're in a straight line. They're trying. They're basically giving up 35 seconds for main street control. And all four work. go down. It does not pay off at all. You cannot allow that to happen. If you're going to risk the rotation, if you're going to give up 30 seconds, you have to hold it. And they just weren't able to do so. And you have accuracy picking up too. You have Kenny and Cole room pushed up. This is a great start for TK. And now you got Pharaoh playing the pseudo anchor here near the back boxes. Easy kill there on the scraps as Kenny finds a two-piece grenade onto Joe and Zero. So as the members from Red Reserve get wiped out, you're going to see TK start to push forward up on the mat, apply pressure over towards that whole area where they have Red Reserve just trapped, and they're just mowing everybody down. Look at the kills on the side of TK right now. It's a combined nine spree between three of their players. Make it 10 as Pharaoh picks up his fifth in a row. They're building an early lead here. And, and I was in the back when we were doing the veto process with both of these teams, and... You know, accuracy was like, yo, you guys want to play London Docks? And Kenny just looked at him and was like, dude, let's play London. And he okay. was like, all right, if my hard carry wants to play London Docks, <laughs> we're playing London Docks first. So Kenny, off to a great start. We're talking about the rotation down to that lower Docks hill. Again, 80 to four, a great start for TK. But Red Reserve, they can get right back into this game if they're able to hold this one. But once again, they win the rotation. They have early positioning, but can they hold on? No, <laughs> nope, they cannot. Nope. <laughs> no, they cannot. Three go down. TK oh going to push goodness. on forward. It should be Kenny entering the hard point first. Says the action going to go down over near the objective. It's going to be TK looking to find these kills in Red Reserve. This is the third hard point in the game. They only got four points on the board. It's not very good. No, definitely not. But there's just one player left. Zero finds Kenny. Scraps finds Pharaoh. They just need to slow down, right? You can see that a team like Red Reserve can get right back into the game very quickly. Joe trying to get pushed out, has that second AR, that bar, that nade doesn't connect, but makes that player very weak. You have Scraps, he's gonna find that kill, clean him on up. These last 20 seconds should go the way of Red Reserve. But due to that push, he gives TK the barrel building spawns that they want for the next hill. But take a look at where Raided's playing on yeah. the map. As he's pushing through underground, once he gets up towards that top room area, he's gonna be influencing the spawns. And as Kenny, alongside Accuracy, they spawn out over near the truck. I think they're gonna set this out. Yeah, that's a big engagement win for Kenny as he takes down Raided. The spawns should be safely in control for TK as we are about to enter the barrel building hard point. Red Reserve now pushed out of the old hard point, enabled setting up in the middle of the map. Let's see if TK can lock this one down. Oh, definitely so. And, and I gotta ask you, what, what do you think of the new TK lineup, right? So they draw, or well, Methods leaves, goes to Optic Gaming. That's a big question mark. You know, who are they gonna get to fill in those shoes and they go with Enable? How do you feel about the roster? I I'm liking what I'm seeing from them so far. It seems like they're just going back to their roots where it's just teamwork over everything, working alongside each other and just building that team chemistry. And just talking with these guys, you know, accuracy is going to be moving back to that main yes. AR role. Enable is going to be flexing a little bit. Seems to be working so far here at the start of stage two. But jumping back into the game here, TK now with around a 60 point lead and growing as they're picking up more kills. Now, one thing that I haven't seen anything from TK is they, they haven't been able to earn streaks just yet. You've had a couple players get really close. Actually, you have a glide bomb on Pharaoh. Thanks for pointing that out, Paradox. In the meantime, actually finds three. Kenny's on a five three, so you still have potential to earn more streaks. They're definitely so, but Red Reserve, they're already in control of Crane. You can see those guys are set up, but yeah, Pharaoh and Enable starting to push on over. They're trying to get fire control. That's a big kill right there from Joe on and Kenny will deny him streaks. Red Reserve. We saw Splice be able to hold down Crane just a match ago. This is really where they got a good amount of time. We'll see if Wright can get back into this game as you have Scraps in fire. He gets traded out by Pharaoh. It's Joe's turn now. There we go. So a solid hold right now for Red. They have no one inside the hard point. Yeah, I mean, you're close. Avoiding it. Jump in. You need the points to try to close this gap <laughs> you currently face. And with Red Reserve spawning on the bottom side of the map, you want to make sure that if you're Red, you need to control fire. And Scraps picks up two crucial kills right there. If you give up fire control and let somebody from TK set up inside there, you just set up a crossfire. And every time you try to rotate back to the hard point, you're going to get some shots peppered into you. And now TK looking to execute that setup. But there's only 15 seconds remaining on the crane hard point as we're about to enter a fresh set 
of rotations. No, and as you said, Enable, right? He's gonna play that flex role, and that's good for him. He's comfortable with that because on the previous uh, EG roster in stage one, he was the main AR. Then they throw him into a main sub. So he's played both play styles, very comfortable with it. A 50 point lead right now for Red Reserve. As you said, we're gonna head back towards Statue. Our next set of hills, Enable, he's down low as his teammates are in the hill getting that time. And just adding on to the conversation about what Enable brings to his TK team, and you could also say the same about accuracy. He's been a player that's been the main AR, been the flex. So if there's ever a moment in time where, you know, somebody's struggling, they can switch up the rows. They have that versatility. And it's great to see that Pharaoh's having a good game here at 19 and 10. Just relieves some pressure off of Kenny. He no longer has to be that hard carry SMG when he has Pharaoh to play off of as TK still with that constant roughly 60 point lead in this game. Yeah, I think it's interesting if we go back over to Pharaoh really quick. Let's hop on his point of view. At the point on his class, he's running infantry hunker, Extended right? He has accident, four man. attachments <laughs> on this gun. So he has that stray speed. He is loaded out. This setup is I am going to try and get as many kills as possible. We see some other players do it. Usually it's a guy like Decimate. So both of the S&D stars, you know, this is the style that they love to play. Stack that gun with so many attachments. Try to get as many kills as possible. Yeah, and obviously armor is a very popular division to run. And typically when we see players switch off of armor, it's to bring out a smoke grenade. But Pharaoh still had that uh, concussion in his back pocket as the tactical choice. But here comes the glide bomb. Finally being called in. We'll take down Raided as TK pushed back into the hard point. Continuing to build their lead up by around 70 points right now, but still the slang massively in favor. I mean, take a look at the side of Red Reserve. You have Joe, negative 11, rated neg 5, neg 1 for Scraps, and neg 5 for 0. Somebody's got to step up, and right now it's got to be Scraps as he was just on a 2 speed before he gets shut down. And it's got to feel good, right, if you're a Nabel, right? You've just been struggling all it's year, killing. really, really just for a very long time, right? He was on that great phase roster, but after that, it's been so hard to find success. You know, a lot of pressure on him as a, as a player to constantly have to put up solid numbers. Right now, he's just hanging out, right? They have a 100-point lead. He's 14 and 17. Let his team do all the work. That just makes you feel so good as a player that you don't have to play at such a ridiculous level to win. Yeah, exactly. He's just chilling. I mean, when you have the aggression that Kenny and Pharaoh bring to this lineup, you can just sit back and look over them and allow them to, you know, quote unquote, like bait for him so that he could set up and play in the right positions on the map. As TK, they're now up by over 100 points, but it's Red Reserve inside the Doc's hard point, looking to hold on to their position. But the pinch about to come in from the back. It's going to be Pharaoh. As he enters inside, Joe's going to drop down, just trying to reposition. He's Looks like he's going to go around through lower docks. Come up behind, but Kenny reads him just like a book. Picks up the kill. TK break on into the hard point as they're looking to close out the game relatively soon. They lock down the remaining time. They only need around 20 more seconds to do so. Yeah, and as you said, that duo of Pharaoh and Kenny so good as they break in that lower docks hill. TK, they also have barrel building. There's Enable showing off the, that shot that he has. He's staying alive top middle. Knows the red reserve players are inside fire. Tags him up a little bit. But I mean, such a great setup right now from TK. They are destroying Red Reserve. You have one player of red, that's zero. He's in cold room, gets shut down. Perfect for rotations with two seconds left. Joe's gonna try and get in contest, but you really have nobody in position to fight for spawns. And I know we were talking about this a bit earlier with Enable just kind of hanging out and filling in the gaps where needed. There are only so many kills yeah, on the map. And, and you look at the top three players, they all have you know roughly 30 kills each. They're doing all the slaying that, that's needed on the map right now. TK, only 10 points remaining, well, 11 to close this map one out. No, exactly that. That's what we were talking about. This team has so much talent. That's why they've won two championships this year. It's just you're going to need a Nable at times, right? When the time calls, you know, when you're playing great teams like Rise or Optic Gaming, Luminosity, you need all four of those players to step up. So right now, Red Reserve, they finally get over 100 points. They don't get a 100-point club, but TK just seven points away from locking up game one. Yeah, they just have so much time to play with. They don't even need to fight for this 15 seconds, but they're going to do exactly that. Enable fighting inside the hard point. He's got his teammate behind him. They're picking up the kills, and they're going to close this map out right here, right now. 250 to roughly 105. A very dominating thing to the finish. Yeah, he's just chilling. He's like, <laughs> boys, thanks for the hard carry. I appreciate it. You see Kenny here with the bronze star. There's mowing players down while he's inside the barrel building hard point. A convincing win for TK in map one. Oh, it definitely was. A much better start than yesterday in their hard points, right? It was time and time again where they found themselves in a very big deficit, a very big hole, and then they win a couple of hard points, you know, and that's always great to see, but you don't want to put that stress on yourself. Yeah. You want to come hot, out hot, right, like they did in game number one. A solid performance on London Docks hard points for them. And you got to remember, Red Reserve, London Docks was a map. I guess it was a long time ago, but 
they were dominant at it. It was their playground. And it's also a map that TK didn't play at they the beginning of the game. Yeah. It was their perma veto. So it's just funny to see how things change over the course of the year. And, you know, just talking a bit about Red Reserve a little bit more, I've been pretty critical of them in the past about being kind of like a mentally weak team where they would get destroyed in one map and then they would just kind of mentally put themselves out yeah. of the rest of the series. But I think with the addition to Scraps, he's just such a funny personality. I think he's the right player for the squad to just lighten the mood and, and refocus everybody as they look ahead to this next map. No, and that's it. It's just map number one, right? There's still a, a great search and destroy team. They know the series is very long and this is a team they want to, they, they really want to impress everybody, right? They want to say, we're the best team in Europe. We can be one of the best teams in the world. For Scraps, this is his really first shot on a T1 team, a, a tier one European team. He wants to make the best of it, but still, TK, a great game one from them. Yeah, and I'll give Scraps credit. He played well, you know, he's the only person to slay and you know, I think he may have finished positive, or if he was negative, it was only yeah. by a, a couple of deaths, but he was the only one up top. The rest of his teammates kind of let him down, left him out to dry in that map number one. But as we were talking about, coming up next is going to be Search and Destroy. And, you know, we were looking at the vetoes, and, you know, these are two good search maps for both these teams. I, I feel like if we're able to, you know, go the distance and, and see both Search and Destroys, obviously it would determine who would win this series. But I just love to watch how both these teams match up in that specific game mode. Uh, definitely so. I, I would love to see a USS Texas game five. We saw TK was able to win that twice yesterday. But when you talk about Red Reserve, they were so good at. Now you bring a guy like Scraps in, you can have a double sniper set up with Scraps and Zero. But you saw Scraps was just on your screen. There's Kenny. He had a monster game number one. But we'll see. This team, so good at search and destroy, especially with that guy, Pharaoh. I mean, he was a search, nasty. search and destroy star for a very long time, and he makes plays. Yeah, and London Docks is a map where we could see the sniper come into play, mainly over near that A bomb site street near the water side. But if you're just joining us now, London Docks Hardpoint went to Team Caliber in convincing fashion. This time around, they don't go down by 100 points. They make sure they, they get a lead early on and they carry it through the rest of the map. Red Reserve looking to bounce back as we're looking ahead. And London Docks has been Red Reserve's, it's been one of their go-to search and destroy maps all year long, just like USS Texas. But Team K, I feel like they're feeling comfortable here. Come on, give them the fist bump. You can do it. There you go, Pharaoh. Let's like, see if please. TK could carry their momentum through as we're about to enter map number two. Yeah, and this is a map that we saw yesterday from Red Reserve against Epsilon. It was pretty back and forth, three to three, and then Red Reserve just ran away with it, where I, I believe they ended up winning that one six to three. They won like four rounds in a row. It was really their defense that was so strong against Epsilon. You have Scraps who plays that low A window. They honestly give up middle control for the most part. It's their retakes on the B side that really impressed me yesterday. We'll see, though, if they're able to do it against a, a very tough team caliber team. And I'm glad you brought that up, because when we talk about Kenny and Pharaoh, they love to be aggressive. And yeah. I want to count it out of the picture of them, you know, one round on offense, maybe to just charge right through the middle of the map, maybe get a smoke over near front fire or cut off that gate alley. Lots of different ways you could attack the middle map. And if Red Reserve are going to give that up, Kenny and Pharaoh, one of the two, they're going to make him pay for it. No, they definitely will. And uh, we'll have to see what they do, because once again, we saw a lot of a lot of different things. I think on this map yesterday, London Docks, where team or teams were testing out airborne, just testing out different timings with all these meta changes. Rated, he has that smoke STG. You know he's gonna smoke that low cross as they always do. That's really their their one constant in their strategy. We'll see what Red Reserve and what TK decide to do in round number one. And that's an important constant to have in your game, especially on London Docks, just to block off that line of sight. And TK, they tried to do a hard counter as they're rushing right through the B bomb site. It's gonna be rated. He's in the back, but he's gave up back. Oh, hold. The sun comes out. That's going to give it away that they're going to be pushing through as number four zero turns around. It's a free bomb plant over near the A bomb site, but TK quickly attacking over towards the Red Reserve base. Yep. Let's say Rated has some help from Zero. Zero must have heard those players. He just stayed right there as they were pushing through. Good that, read. A nice read right there. Able to find that second kill. So already two on the board for Zero. Can he find the third? He stays alive. Does Ooh. find the third. Can he find the ace? A great round number one from Zero and Red Reserve. He's in a back on up. Knows how important streaks can be. Rated nice shots right there on the guy in the back car. A solid first round. As you said, I mean, it was just a blind counter from TK, right? They just took a risk. Kenny and Farrell were just flying up that B street, but Red Reserve heard them and adjusted appropriately. And, you know, I respect it. Round one, try to throw the other team off guard, maybe yeah. do a quick flank, but just didn't work out. Maybe that's the, I think maybe it was Rated who was back call initially, spotted Kenny as he was pushing in, and then the Southern Grenade, of course, gave up the playbook that they knew that there's some aggression coming in through the full side of the map. Plus, you had two members from Red Reserve who are already inside the A-bomb site, getting the bomb down. But regardless, TK now on offense, Pharaoh with the sniper rifle trying to hit the timing, spots scraps. At least gets the information while the rest of his teammates are attacking that B-bomb site. 
Yeah, I mean, TK, they knew that Red Reserve played this yesterday. So maybe that round number one, they were just trying to guess that this is one of Red Reserve's go-to on offenses. On defense, though, Zero gets cut down by accuracy. Nice shots. Bomb is planted at B. Joe, he does have some help from Raided. But they are a man down. This is going to be a tough retake. And it looks like TK is giving them nothing to play with. As Kenny's able to find one, they're going to double peek. Joe in the back, and he's able to find one and stay alive. And then Scraps finds another. So 2v2 with 30 seconds left. I was watching that engagement play all down on the minimap. It was just awkward timing for Pharaoh. Joe's going to win the fight against accuracy. Can he follow up with the second? Yes, he can. As he takes down Kenny, Red Reserve, even though they dropped early on. They didn't have the man advantage. The bomb got planted for TK. They retake the bomb site. And I got to say, it was up to Scraps. Scraps got that important kill on the Pharaoh. Shut down the pinch coming in from middle map. And then a big win at the end there for Joe. As, T as it's going to be Red Reserve, sorry, winning the first two rounds here. Yeah, great job by Joe. I mean, if you question his AR ability, there it was right there. Showing off a little bit. Nice shots. Kenny and the Nabel were trying to bait and switch him. But Enable was weak from a nade and... They go for that last second challenge, and Joe's able to win it. So and this some is something I'd like to talk to you, uh, you about quickly, Joe. For this B bomb site, I don't necessarily blame TK for being a bit overly aggressive to try to take control of like the bus side, because we've seen time and time again where if you get that bomb planted, and then you play a bit reserved, like over towards front call, if you give up that truck and try to play near the underground stairs, players will stretch the bomb, and you'll lose sight of that the bomb site, and you won't be able to pick off that diffuser. Do you agree with what TK did in that previous round? Or would you like to see maybe play a bit more passive? I think that underground and coal can be so powerful, right? If you can get the plant that you want, it's obviously tough to do. You have to smoke out gate, as TK is doing right now, to get that perfect setup. But it, it's tough. I mean, I, I would love to see them back up. But if you do have pressure towards bus, you're just wasting Red Reserve's time. Yeah. So maybe if he doesn't challenge that second gunfight, you know, makes it a two versus two, they can back on up. Just play the clock. I mean, it's always tough, but here on offense, Red Reserve now in a two versus three. Joe, once again, he is able to find a glide bomb. Now it's raided, left all alone in a very tough situation, and Pharaoh has a sniper rifle, misses that shot. He doesn't miss too often. Swaps to the SDG. Raided's going to re-challenge here, and Pharaoh connects with the headshot, so TK will have their first round on the board here. Give the defuse to Kenny. He's got the most progression towards that glide bomb, but yes, you pointed it out. Joe has his own glide bomb to use. Is he going to use it early? Is he going to save it? I wonder if TK had been tracking the points. We'll see if they swap off their classes, put on that mountain division to hide that information coming in from Joe. Had a chance to earn maybe more streaks, but couldn't finish the kill with the machine pistol. But 2-1 scoreline as we enter round number four. And we'll have to see what Red Reserve decides to do on their next offense, right? Because what his TK has shown twice is they are okay with retaking, with retaking A. They will give that plan up. They're just trying to defend that B bomb site. So we'll have to see what Red Reserve does on the next one. Do they plan A and then take the side of TK? We'll just see. But now it's TK's turn. Glybomb trying it. to be called in. But can the TK guys get away? Enable can't. Enable can't no. get away. No, he cannot. He's going to get cut down, and they know one player's pushing through lights right now. They know it's Kenny. Nobody on TK had mountains, so he got full information on where everybody's located. Kenny falls. Feral finds the trade kill on to Raided, so it's a 3v2 situation favoring Red. But take a look accuracy. at the bomb timer. Yeah. 25 seconds remaining. And look at accuracy. Accuracy goes all the way around. He Is knows they can't defuse. Yep, and Feral, he pushes through lights. A great job. This is what they were trying to set up their first offense, but Scraps was able to find that. Now Scraps left in a 1v1 with just 10 seconds left. This is such a tough spot. Do you want to give up this kill? Looks like he's going to go for it. Almost gets it. Just not enough time, though. He's going to rush accuracy, clean that up. But a solid offensive win. So Red Reserve, they win two in a row. TK respond with two of their own. Okay, so let's talk about that glide bomb a little bit. Do you think he called it in too early? I felt like his teammates yeah. weren't necessarily in a position to collapse on the bomb site, but at least he was able to get yeah. a, a kill with it and yeah. get information. I think that's it, right? You give your team man advantage. You give your team an opportunity to win the round even with the bomb down, but TK do a very good job. As you said, some people like to back up in that situation. Kenny and Pharaoh stay pushed up. They take a couple of one-on-ones, which just gives accuracy time to make a play through middle. And Scraps working towards some streaks. He's got the bomb in hand, looking to get that early plan off. First blood comes in. Kenny falls. Scraps dies. No streaks earned from him. Oh, look at this play. Pharaoh finding the kill, but coming around the flank. It's always Joe. Joe's always behind you on the map. Gets the trade kill. Man advantage to Red Reserve. They have control of the A-bomb site. Let's see when they decide to get the objective down for TK. It's down to accuracy and enable, who's yet to find a kill. Yeah, and that was the first time TK hasn't stacked B bomb site. So they ended up playing that pretty well. They pushed through middle. Zero won a big one-on-one. -on -one, I believe it was Kenny in the middle. 
what, but allowed Joe to push through that B Dom area, right, right where those boxes are. He flanks that A bomb. Now you have a three v one for accuracy. A tough spot for him. Yeah, I think he's just waiting for me. His health regen. I, I think in a situation, you just dive off the map. Try to not feed any score. He's gonna spot raid it again. Re challenges. He's heavily tagged up. Zero has the angle. He's not trying. a lot of time he's to with. Yeah, I think you just dive off. Yep. I respect the play. I think that's a smart play to make. Yep, definitely so. Swan dives right into a box. Here we're going to see Bronze Star going to Raided. This is him picking off Enable. And Enable, he hasn't been playing too well in Search and Destroy from the games that I've seen from TK so far throughout Stage 2. I mean, that's Maybe he's just finding weakness. awkward timing, but... Yeah, it's always been his weakness, though. Even, even last stage, I think even years previously, if there was one game mode where you don't expect numbers from Enable, it's, it's definitely Search and Destroy. Maybe you could ask Pharaoh for some tips, improve on that game mode. <laughs> yeah. But as it stands, Red Reserve, they have a lead. Granted, only by one round. There's they find themselves on defense. Though. Yeah, here's yeah, that yeah. mid-aggression. Exactly what we were talking about highlighting coming into this matchup. Red Reserve giving up mid-control, but nobody from TK taking advantage of it just yet. And Kenny's trying to do the same thing that Joe did. They may think there's still a player in that A site on Red Reserve, but there's nothing. All of Red What's have the bomb given up What's the bomb carrier doing? Why is the bomb carrier not in the bomb site? Why are you not planting the bomb? Your two teammates have complete control of the site. And that was enable, wasn't it? And that's what we just talked about. It's just those small little decisions that he makes right there that puts his team in a tough spot. 0-5 from him. Doesn't get that plan off. That completely changes how this round is now played out. Yeah, they Red Reserve, I'm not sure if they should know that the bomb is down because th there is a sound cue. And now this forces TK to push out of the bomb site and Red are just going to wait for them. Rated, trying to find the kill. He will. All down to accuracy, even though he's now got the bomb in his control, gets the trade kill. Should get swarmed in here momentarily as Scraps just waiting for Zero to set up. And there you go. That round, for me, all boys down to enable. Being overly aggressive up the street, drops the bomb in a bad position while TK had complete control of that A bomb site. Don't agree with the play. In the end, it's Red Reserve now going up by two rounds. Yeah, I I'm not too sure if Enable didn't know he had the bomb or if, two, he thought that there was still someone from Red Reserve inside of it. He was waiting for his teammates to really clear it out, but still, he was so far advanced on the map, drops that bomb down. I mean, if he stays alive, gets the bomb down, it's a 3v3, right? Yeah. With bomb planted, you're feeling pretty good. You have accuracy in a power position. Instead, Red Reserve able to find him. They know bombs down, able to clutch up that round. Jones Scraps, by the way, having great games, combining for a score line of 13 and five. First blood comes in from Raided as he shuts down Pharaoh. So early man advantage to Red. As initially, it looks like they're going to be attacking towards that B bomb side, but inside here, oh. it's going to be Joe. Nice timing. Good snap onto Kenny. They go up by two men here. Actually, playing some catch with Raided. It's all down to Enable. Yet to find a kill here. And he's in a near impossible situation. But we just saw Jer do it before. Enable finds one, so he's on the board. The bomb will get planted here over towards the B site. And now, what's his avenue for attack as he tries to retake the B bomb site? Yeah, such a tough position, but really just Joe finding that, finding that first kill on a Kenny. Kenny didn't have Mountain on, he didn't have Inconspicuous, so I think Joe heard him at the last <gasps> second. Enable does find one still, though. 27 seconds left, he's gonna get flanked by Scraps. Able to find him, there we go. So it was two to two, and then Red wins three rounds in a row. Now they're just one round away from tying the series up one to one. Starting to run away with this game, Enable. I thought when he was behind that bomb site, the two players over towards that second hard point would uh, line up perfectly for him. Almost had a good reposition into lights as well, but timing not in his favor. At least he's able to find some kills, so he won't finish with that goose egg. But TK <laughs> now backs against the wall. They're fighting for their map live. Here. You know, we'll have to see what they do on offense. Red Reserve has been really, really solid on their defense, and they play very passive on defense, but it looks like this time they're, they're switching it up. Joe has the help of zero over B bomb, and then you have Scraps watching the lights. Smokes go in. Joe finds that first blood on Enable, throws another nade out. He's going to get a hit marker, actually backs down accuracy. There is one player there. That's Kenny. He gets taken down by Scraps. So the blind counter from Red Reserve ends up working out. Okay, so it seems like the aggression that we were talking about that TK brings to the table may be working a little bit against them. Yeah. You know, a bit too overly aggressive, getting caught out of position, getting caught sprinting down to accuracy. And Pharaoh, Pharaoh with the sniper over towards the B side, connects onto Joe. Evens up the man count, 2v2 now, going up against Scraps and Zero. And they still have plenty of time to work with. It's almost at like this point, if Pharaoh, can he just grab the bomb and get out, right? Like maybe you try to rotate it towards A, let accuracy waste their time. Let's say maybe he's trying to do that. No, he's going to try and help accuracy in this light area. Takes a shot at Scraps, actually wins that as well. So this is a 4v2. Now it's down to a 1v2 for Scraps. 
Pharaoh, machine pistol, he's got two bolts. Oh no. Scratch finds the kill. Okay, there's a trade kill coming in the Cogcaster ammo thing. Throwing me off a little bit there, but Just a little bit. <laughs> in the NTK stabilize, they stay alive to see at least one more round. Here we're gonna see the Bronze Star from Actor Z as he gets the trade kill on the scrap, shoots him right in the cankles there. One more round, TK live to see. We'll see if Red Reserve could close it out or if TK can continue to force more rounds here on London Dock Search and Destroy. And that to me just screams sort of like team chemistry or inexperience as a team, right? You have a 4v2 situation right there. There's no reason you should throw rounds like that away. I think you could even back up and let them plant the bomb. Exactly, you Pairs can. <laughs> force them to defend that objective and just swarm in with the man advantage. Work the trades in your favor, but TK, they have an able here. Towards the A bomb site. Ooh. First blood, it's oh God. Just beams them. That's going to be a free bomb plant for Red Reserve. Looking to close it out here. And once again, TK three stack B. They give up the retake situation, but Enable gets first blooded. So now this is so tough. Now it's a 4v1. Scraps going for the ace. He's 12 and 3, by the way. There we go. Red Reserve win this one 6 to 3. Let's watch this one again. It was going to be the Bronze Star. And you see Red Reserve just handling business in that search and destroy as Joe finishes the final kill there onto Kenny. You pointed out Scraps. He was the lead slayer in the hard point for Red Reserve. And he follows it up here in the search and destroy as Red now tie the series one to one. Yeah, great game out of them. It just felt like TK, every single defense, they were like, all right, they're gonna hit B this time. They're gonna hit B this time. And Red Reserve just kept going A. They were like, all right, if you're gonna give us the A plant, we'll go ahead and take it. And then on offense, TK were just trying to be almost a little too aggressive, right? Like they were just trying to push up the map a little bit too much. Red Reserve just playing passive, finding the pace that they needed. And well, that's why they win that one, six to three. And Merck, uh, I can't help but think about that one round where Enable has the bomb in his hand, pushes yeah. it over towards that fire ladder, and he dies. Drops the bomb while his teammates had control of the A bomb site. Could have been a swing round for me. Maybe TK could have stabilized and built some momentum off that. But as it stands, this series all tied up, one map apiece. TK with a convincing win to the map one hard point, but they fall apart in the search and destroy. It's going to be capture the flag coming up next. We'll see you after this quick commercial break.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Red Reserve versus Team Caliber. The series tied up, one map apiece for both teams as we enter Flag Tower CTF. And off the start, three go down very quickly for Red Reserve. TK with a chance to push up, establish map control, and get a good head start on getting the second wave of kills. Oh, definitely so. This is a map we saw Red Reserve actually lose it to Epsilon yesterday. They feel they're a very strong team on it. Practice went well. They said yesterday it was just a bit of an odd experience. Epsilon have a very Weird play style to them, but a great start for TK. The flag is away as Kenny's running it. They're getting all the appropriate cuts. Zero does break on through. Okay. Rated's there for the trade, but you have Pharaoh in a great position. He finds the kill on the zero. One more player to get past. It should be Kenny, though, putting in this flag very early on for TK. Not even a minute played, and he's now just 190 points away from earning that glide bomb. Could be impactful in terms of aiding some offense here on Flat Tower. But Kenny, just looking to stay alive. His teammates picking up kills as TK look to reestablish map control over the middle of the map. And we should see that one player, that's a naval. He's already pushed up pretty well, pretty far as well. So in the spot zero, that's a tough gunfight. Gonna try and stay alive, does a good job. That just lets Red Reserve. There's still pressure in our base, so we always have to make sure that he doesn't sneak. We're consistently calling out that a naval is alive. He's gonna push to this bottom middle area. And Scraps pushed up as well. So pretty back and forth. Both of these teams just trying to, to get that mid-map control. That's typically how Flag Tower plays out, right? You get that first wave of kills, you push up, you maybe take control of your opponent's window side, try to get somebody over near the big gun side of the map, and then just work on just constricting your opponent's space from there. But here we go. We're watching Zero as he makes his way around through the outskirts of the map. Hey, a play right here. One player falls. Yes, he, he might want to go right for the flagpole because as Pharaoh spawns up, they're going to let somebody sneak in. Has to get past accuracy, rotating back through his bottom window, picks up the kill. But here comes Joe on the follow-up. A player coming off respawn. That should be Pharaoh. He finds the kill. Three fall for Red Reserve as now it's down to Scraps to maintain this forward positioning. Yeah, definitely so. You have Scraps still in this space, but with TK, up 1-0 in this flat tower and enable already in their base. Let's go into Asher Gaming listening with Team Caliber. Okay, 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 me, watch out. Good top, yo, two on the fight. Okay, one's top gun and one's their bottom mid, I think. One's top gun, one's their bottom mid. Okay, back right, back top right, gun, there's two, two. Back right, back right, back right, back right. I'm in your bottom back mid. Right. I'm jumping top gun. Back right. Nice, I, I spawned going, guys. Back, back, back left, back left, back left, scrap. One, one could have snuck through. Back right, back right, back right. No, two in your back base. Yo, one's all pushing out. Uh, Joe is off spawn. You can push up. Get mid, get mid. Yo, one's gonna be close circle, Ian. I'm going top one, no? Going our low gun. Pick up right. I, I got right off one, I got right off one. You can be our top gun. No, I'm circle. Yeah, I'm Joe's one of our bottom mid. Joe's our bottom mid. Right. He right, he's our front now. And one's their, their bottom mid as well. I'm gonna die. Alright, one's their bottom mid. Joe's our bottom mid as well. Alright, I have our bottom mid push right, out. Gun, gun. Gun. Nice, that was Joe. That was him. One's on the ground, on the ground. Stay alive, stay alive. Do you need help? You didn't push me, he's me. Holding right. Yeah, 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 underground dead, nice. underground dead. No. Yo, one Yo, one's right, right wood, right wood. Jay, he doesn't know you're there. Guy front of mid, front of mid, front of mid. Right wood weak. He's challenging you, he's challenging you, he's challenging you. Right, this one, right, this one. One shot, one shot on the pillar, on the pillar. Left side, left side. Wait, did you get the guy on the wood? No, that was him, that was him. Oh, that was him. Wait, I'm right, one's with Matt. Stay up, stay up. Our bottom mid, our bottom mid. I'm wrapping back. I'm challenging the guy. Picking up our bottom mid. No, we pushed our gun. Nice. I'm holding right. One's our bottom mid. One's right, zero. Zero's right. Zero's gonna be outskirts. Zero's gonna hit you, Lamar. Nate, 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 Nate. Nice, huge kill. We, no, we're gonna look nice. Oh my Lamar. god, Lamar. Good play. Can we all use Jens again? Respawn on our flag. Yeah. Lamar, I'm looking Jens. He could, he could be outskirts. No, no, he's top right, right wood, right wood. I'm going outskirts. Top wood, top wood, top wood. Top wood, top wood. Top wood, top wood. Top wood, top wood. I'll be nice. Oh my god, Lamar's good. I'll push him right, Lamar. I got Nate there, bottom mid. Then go to that window. I'm at their outskirts. I'm at their window. They got top gun. Top gun, top gun, top gun. Weak. Watch out. I'm in their mid. Watch out, top gun. I hit a Nate in their bottom mid. I'm at their outskirts. They're back right. They're back right. I'm at. You want to step back right? I'm at. I'm at. He's back right. I'm in Jens. I'm in Jens. I'm in the elevator. In the elevator. In the elevator. That's last guy. Elevator. Dead. 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 I spawn gun. I spawn gun. Are you? I spawn on you. May spawn on you. I don't. I don't see outskirts. I got our gun. I got our gun. Oh, he's Jens. Oh, he's Jens. Jens. Oh, he's one hit Jens somewhere. I got a glide. Okay. Fuck. This way. Rated was Jen. Oh, behind me, bottom mid. I, I Rated my push right. I'm just camping right here. Crap, you challenge. You challenge, I'll you go mid, I'll go mid. Ah, uh, he got me. I only got a glide. And you heard right there, TK making a great push, but I believe it was Zero who was able, or sorry, Rated who was able to find two and get that return. A little bit of frustration right there from Enable. It was a great push. Accuracy defended his base there for a little bit. Went on a, a bit of a spree. Able to get that glide bomb. But Red Reserve, keep it at a 1-0 deficit. And they could make an early uh, late play here in the first half. Joe with the flag in hand, rated here to follow up. A couple of players from TK rotating back, can't find the kill onto Pharaoh as Zero picks up his third kill of the game right here. He falls in the base, scraps a last second attempt going into the half. It's going to be TK up by one flag, but considering the score lines on some of the Red Reserve players, I, was gonna I say. think they're all right with that. Yeah, accuracy 17-7, and seven, a wonderful half from him. He gets that bronze star, beautiful shots. 
coming in right here, but you saw zero and he tweeted about it. He was like, man, yesterday I did not play well. I had like a 0.7, you know, I have to step it up for the team. And, you know, that was against Epsilon. You know, we have a much tougher opponent today in Team Caliber and he got worked in that game one. He's getting worked in this first half of game three. Well, look, you're going to the half as we were saying, only down by one flag, you know, yep. not too much harm done. And it's only a glide bomb, all things said and done. You could definitely earn more impactful streaks than that. But here we go, kicking off the second half here. Zero, first blood as he takes down Accuracy and looking to follow it up. Well, never mind. He catches the grenade <laughs> from Kenny. As he falls, his teammates just looking to establish some control. And look how passive Red ha have played this initial break. Just looking to set up and catch these players from TK sprinting. Yeah, now Red Reserve has to back on up. Scraps trying to find a kill on, on Kenny. Kenny with a smoke grenade, actually. He's going to push up on that outskirts. Actually, he's going to bait him. But Scraps gets in a very solid position. Fly bomb called in by accuracy. Can he find any? Is able to find one. And you can see that the blue arrow start to push in. Kenny wins that gunfight. Pharaoh, he's going to pull this flag towards the generators. And this should be a flag cap for Team Caliber. Yeah, absolutely. Look at where Red are spawning up. Now for the remaining three TK players pushed up on the map. You're just looking to catch these guys in transition as they're trying to push up over towards the middle of the map. And they don't find any kills. Now it's going to be Red. Potentially a chance to counter here. You have Joe pushed up over towards the small gun through the bottom lobby. It's going to be zero. They're finding the kills. Three currently down for TK, but the spawns coming in right at the back side of the map. This is what we're talking about. That second wave of kills. Yep. Joe now bottom gun. Finds one, Nate comes out, tags up accuracy, but he falls right after. The defensive kill's coming in, and even though they're just being traded out, it's gonna favor the defending team, because as they spawn up, they're gonna be close to their flag. And look at the score line for accuracy right now. He's 21 and nine on a three spree, looking to earn some more score streaks here. Yeah, he's been an absolute beast, especially defending his flag, right? He's not allowed Red Reserve any opportunity. Nice Nate there, able to find scraps, and he works for some more streaks. That's five in a row. He's just 200 points away from a glide bomb. And we saw what they were able to do with just one glide bomb. It was a perfect execution with that score streak. Got them that second flag cap. So we know how important score streaks can be, especially on a map like this. Yeah, absolutely. That push was just beautifully done. That's exactly how you play off the back of the score streak. At Pharaoh, just being a sneaky beaver, yeah, he annoying. finds Joe. <laughs> and as soon as you pick up that first kill, now it's going to be a swarm into the base. Pharaoh pushing on forward, working alongside Kenny. Ambitious challenge there on the zero, but gets some tags. Stays alive. That's the more important thing. Action now going down all over the Red Reserve. Base flag now touched by Kenny. He finds one. Looking out for more blood. Free go down for Red Reserve. But Scraps well. is waiting. Scraps is waiting. I don't think they know he's here. He could potentially play for the return. Are they going to spot him? Yes, they do. And actually going to maintain the forward positioning as he tries to earn the second and thir third tier score streaks. Kenny, in the meantime, he's going to get, get away with this flag. It should be another capture for Team Caliber as they go up 3-0. to zero. And that was just beautifully done by Team Caliber. You saw as the flag goes out, they knew for a split second there that Scraps could have spawned up low gun. And you could kind of see a Nable. I couldn't hear exactly who it was on the main stage. I think it was him, but basically say, wait, wait a second. I think I know where he is. He comes from the middle of the map, able to find him, gets that flag home free. A great job by TK. A newly formed team, but their teamwork seems to be on point. Yeah, a good example of, of something that Enable brings to the team. Just yeah. being calm, cool, collected, the leader that he is. And you know, you got some young players on this TK missing. lineup. Could could uh, help calm them down and focus on the situation. But yeah, accuracy is just shredding. 2.8 KD right now <laughs> on a two spree. He's just slaying everything that he sees on the map. And speaking of slaying, zero continuing to struggle a bit. Eight and 19, Joe, 10 yeah. and 20. Similar story to that game one hard point where just the slaying non-existent for Red Reserve. And, and Enable's able to find two, puts more pressure on it. But really with that score line to me, right? You have accuracy at 28 and 11. He's just finding guys like Zero and Joe who are just sprinting at him, right? He's getting set up with that AR middle map or towards the enemy base and just finding easy kills as they start to sprint out at him. So a great job by Accuracy as they have a 3-0 lead. Red Reserve finally get a couple of kills. They're starting to play a little bit aggressive. They have 80 seconds to work with. Zero finds a couple. They're going to get this flag out. Any streaks maybe as they start to come off respawn. Yep. Glide bomb immediately called in. Going to try to delay as they keep the flag carry pin back. Now pushing forward through the gun side of the map. It's going to be accuracy. Is he able to sneak on through? Joe with the chance to make some big defensive kills. Finds one. Takes out accuracy. Can he get the second? No, he cannot. Enable staying alive. The challenge comes in. Enable finds two. Enable pulls the flag. He gets the return. His teammates set up on the wood side of the map. This could be the dagger for the map. Oh, yeah. As Enable, he's going to be able to put that flag in. Still looking good for TK. Only 40 seconds left for Red Reserve to make something happen. And I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Oh, definitely not. Uh, again, it's just been the respawns that TK have dominated. I mean, from start to finish in the slaying and the score category, they have outclassed Red Reserve, and that's a little bit scary, right? Because 
the reason they went for scraps, the reason why he was such a uh, wanted free agent in Europe was due to his slaying power. But right now, TK is just walking all over them. I mean, to be fair, it can't be all on his shoulders to do no, all the slaying. Not. I mean, look at Joe. Look at Zero. These are guys that when they're on point, they have such a huge impact on the game. Nable's going to get some streaks as the game winds up taking on down. It's a very convincing capture to flag win for TK as they retake the lead in the series. They go up two to one in map count. And really quickly, I want to talk about accuracy. The thing is, Black Tower CTF, typically we see four SMGs be played. But yeah. because TK gets such an early lead, they can afford to bring that out assault rifle. And he just plays a good for control. He looks to control top window and he just pre-aims everything on the map. You pointed it out perfectly. Just looking to catch these players on red reserve coming off sprint and he just mowed them down. He finishes with over 30 kills in a CTF game. And, and typically we see AR sort of struggle on this map, right? Because there's so many engagements that are so close quarters. Like if the enemy is winning their one-on-one -on -one gunfights with subs, they put you in such a tough position, right? How do you push up the map with an AR? You can't, you're constantly running in the PPSH players and just right there, if his teammates are winning them, that'll, that helps him to get in a position middle of the map, which then he can watch over his subs. That's what we always say. ARs help subs, subs help a a ARs. It's that team chemistry. If everybody is clicking just like that, it's so tough to beat. Yeah, it's a dynamic relationship yeah. between those uh, two roles that you play on the map. Both, you know, have their importance and you need them both to kind of succeed. But as we look ahead in the series, coming up next, it's going to be that St. Marie hard point. This is where Red Reserve are now fighting for their series lives. You think they have it in them to force I, game five? I do. I, I think that's what's so important about sort of winning Search and Destroy, right? I think EG does a wonderful job at this, right? They may go down in the series. They may go down 2-1. But a game four, it gives you an opportunity, another opportunity for your superstars to step up. This is their map pick, St. Marie Dumont. This is what they wanted to play. This is their choice. And we'll see if they're able to tie up this series at 2-2 two to two and send this to a game five. Okay, pressure on to Red Reserve, but TK, just thinking back to that first hard point we saw in this series on London Docks, it was lights out from them from start to finish. What was it, like 145 point victory for them? They're obviously cruising. They got a lot of momentum, especially after winning that CTF game. And Red Reserve, I think we could all agree here that the slang needs to be stepped up by someone. It can't just, you can't put all the pressure no, on the, the whole scraps. team. You the look at Zero, you look at Joe, somebody has to help him out. We'll see who steps up coming into this fourth map. Yeah, definitely so. And, you know, St. Marie's a map where there's been a lot of discussion about the meta. There's been some two bars. There's just been one bar, like no STG. There's been, you know, three subs. We'll have to wait and find out what teams are running on this one. But imagine a team like Red Reserve. They're going to run as many subs as possible. Maybe Joe at times pulls out that second bar. But again, this is their map choice and rated he has to go up against accuracy who just dropped that 30 bomb on flag tower ctf so uh, a big matchup for him as well that's gonna be tough and i actually spoke to joe about the role change because we were all kind of perplexed a little bit yeah. why would joe be running that second air over zero and he goes well it's only on arden's forest that he runs that second air so I, I think we're gonna see three subs coming out from red reserve here but the issue is is that you're going up against some fantastic subs on the side of team caliber kenny and pharaoh they're gonna bring the aggression they're gonna be in your face all game long you got to find a way to shut them down. Oh, definitely so. And you can see that on your screen. CWL champs from August 15th through the 19th. Tickets on sale now. You don't want to miss COD champs if you're a Call of Duty fan. It is the best event of the year. We're going to crown a world champion. I'm so excited for it. Yeah, I can't wait to have that event come up. It's going to be right here in Columbus, the Nationwide Arena, if I remember correctly. Sure. Had some historic esports events there already, and Call of Duty looking to make its mark at that arena. But here we go Red Reserve versus Team Caliber. Game four, St. Marie Dumont and Hardpoint. Red Reserve fighting for their lives in this series. And we're starting on board with the new guy on this roster, Scraps. Let's see if he can have an impact early on here on the first Hardpoint. Yeah, so we see three SMGs for Red Reserve. You have Raided with a bar. But there's Enable. He's going to find three kills. Can he find the fourth? Yeah. Able to do so. He's working on some streaks already, 100 points away from a glide bomb. Red Reserve needs to be careful. They need to recognize this. Oh, one bullet away from that kill. That could have been a big one wow. and Joe finds him. I think that's actually oh, a, a wall swing of events. Joe. Yeah, a swing of events right there. As that got scary very fast for Red Reserve, but a great response from them. And I will say, I love that repositioning from Enable. As soon as he picks up that fourth kill, gets out of the hard point, right to the power position over here, top red. 
If he was able to find that kill on Raider, I believe he would have at least had the Glide Bomb. But now, coming up off respawn, he's able to find one. We see TK set up right now. Two ARs. They got one bar and enable. They got the SCG and accuracy. He's continuing to hit his shots here. Nice oh snap God. there on the Joe as TK set up well for this upcoming hard point. But it's going to be zero trying to sneak on through. I think Kenny's sniffing this one out. Yeah, but a great start for Red Reserve, right? 40 to 9 already. You have Zero, who already has four kills. That's more than one whole half he had in a CTF. So definitely <laughs> some bright signs for Red. But you can see TK, they're pinching this right now. They're going to get the hill control that they want. They spawn Red Reserve out. Accuracy has a big one-on-one -on -one against Raided. Not able to win it. We'll see. He spawns, he spawns out. Yeah, he spawns very far out. Now Red Reserve, it's their time to pinch. And this is what they want. They want uh, TK spawning all the way out towards that radio tower. A ton of time here for Red Reserve, unless Kenny has something okay. to say about it. Never mind. I was about to say, it's almost not even worth for TK to push back across the map because there's not going to be a lot of time remaining. But with Kenny finding those kills, there's a chance for him to fight for some scrap time. Oh. At the very least, you limit the time for Red Reserve as TK, they got a good setup coming for this upcoming parking lot hard point. Red Reserve trying to travel across the map to try to fight in transition to this next hard point. And TK, if they lock this one down, they'll have to lead in the game. Yeah, so there we go, 66 to 67 to 16. But as you said, TK, they have parking lot control. How would Red Reserve try and break this? That lead could have been a lot worse, okay. but a great play out of Kenny. But two go down. They do have the spawns, as you can see on the mini-map, but there's Joe and Zero now. Those spawns still coming in, so Zero, Rated, have to slow down, wait for their reinforcements. Finally, we see somebody from Red Reserve pushing over towards the yeah, stable side late. of the map, but he falls. I was about to say the exact same thing, a little bit too late. You need somebody influencing the spawns towards that side of the map. I mean, it, those kills are almost essentially useless because TK still have to spawn their favorite. They spawn, what is it, like 12 feet away from the hard point? Easy rotation. Now they're starting to spawn a little bit further away as Red Reserve fight inside the hard point, but also not a lot of time remaining here. 20 seconds left on parking lot. Now we're looking over towards the lookout tower on the left-hand side of the map. TK looking to set up there as you got their AR players accuracy set up, looking to control over towards the shed side. Yeah, and if we can go over to enable, is he still running a bar? So is TK going? Yeah, so TK is going with the two AR setup. Right now, the big thing with this is if you don't win rotations with a two AR setup, it is very difficult to break kills, right? There's a lot more close gun engagements that you will lose if Red Reserve can get set up. So we'll see how TK can break on in. That's a nice one right there from Pharaoh. There's Kenny as well, and there's the pinch that they want. Stuns himself a little bit. Just but a little bit. Speaking a bit more about that 2 AR setup, it, it's all about control, right? Yeah. You get that second AR so that you could just post up and pre-aim in, but it really does limit your mobility around the map. But TK looking to fight back inside the hard point. And speaking about Assault Rifle players, rated 1 in 8 right now. But despite that, this team has a 40-point lead. Yeah, but you, you got to remember, like, a lot of the... The fights he's probably taking are tougher because he has two ARs shooting at him. Yeah. Maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one that turns into a one-on-two -on -two because enable helps out accuracy, whatever it is. But as you said, still a 40-point lead. Scrap's able to find a couple. And I'm sure Rated will turn that around sooner or later. One of the most consistent players in RCWL. So he does find one on accuracy. We're going to go back towards this restaurant hill. His red reserve. They do rotate early on, but you see one player. That's Kenny going all the way around with a bit of a flank now. Scraft's not gonna find it, and Kenny finds two when he gets in the hill. I will say, I would have liked to seen Joe swap positions with Rated there. Joe up top red with a sub. Maybe you want Rated to set up there so he can peek out of the windows and pick off these players. But now Kenny, he's starting to heat up. He was struggling early on in this game, and now he has a chance to get some streaks. In fact, he's gonna earn himself the glide bomb, but just that as he falls to the wall bang of Joe. But here comes Accuracy, allowing to push right up. He finds some kills inside the hard point. Quick flank from Pharaoh does get shut down. But still, as it stands, we were talking about a little bit earlier, around a 40-point lead for Red Reserve and now growing. But around the flank, here comes Kenny. Finds one. Looking for the second. There's the follow-up. And Kenny's been making these plays all series long as he's starting to find his footing in this game. Yeah, but Raiden's already rotated over to Winer. He's the only guy over here. He's able to find one, but there's a trade out of Kenny. Good job from him. So Red Reserve, they're going to fight for the scrap time. They're going to get it. So they're going to have about a 50-point lead as we head over to Winery. But TK have the spawn and the setup that they want. Nice shots right there out of Rated. Decides to switch over to that STG. Sees the way accuracy is shooting, shooting and figures I may pull on one out as well. Now, how will Red Reserve try and break this? Two go down, but the spawns are still close. Scraps breaks on and on that side. Does he have any help, though? Have to wait and find out. There's zero. Able to find, not able to find accuracy, so TK should hold on. And it... Red Reserve were trying to set up the exact same push as last time with Raided setting up over near the yellow barrels to put pressure onto the ammo side spawns. 
They were able to well, force one player go. from TK to spawn up, but just like that, fighting through the front of the hard point, it's going to be Kenny now coming off respawn. Red Reserve set up inside, but Kenny finds two. His teammates now here for the follow-up. Pharaoh finds the trade onto Raided. One more player to get past zero with the machine pistol. He finds the kill, so the remaining 15 seconds should go in favor of TK. And now I think if you're Kenny, you start to wait for your teammates to push up on the map, play around the glide bomb here. Yep, that's just it. They're going to have that opening, right? So as soon, he's going to probably wait here for about 10 seconds. Yeah, you know? look at where his teammates are. His he's teammates are very far from him. They're going to try and get set up middle of the map, and then he's going to call in that glide bomb, and they're going to try and make a push. So very patient here, but I like this play. All right, glide bomb in. He's going to give them all the information, but let's watch that kill feed. So one TK angle. member did go down, <laughs> and he actually gets his teammate. Now they have to try and flood the front. All four of TK members go down. Very unfortunate right there. As you said, a tough angle for him. And Red Reserve, they're going to hold on. Yeah, you just saw it when it was coming down on the sky. You just couldn't really pick off a player. And just the angle it went down, it was like angled towards red. So you couldn't find the player inside the hill. You couldn't find the player anchoring over near the bat their street. So that streak gets nothing done for TK. And it allows Red Reserve to get their perfect setup going. It looks like they're going to milk this hard point for all the time. As now they're starting to build a significant lead in this game. Going up by over 50 points now. And Grung, they're finding the kills inside the hard point. It's zero. He's starting to have an impact here as he's positive eight on a four three now putting pressure on the spawns and scraps. Can he turn on to accuracy? No, he cannot. But the damage has been done. Red Reserve have a, a nice lead to work with as we're moving back over to the lookout post. And that's just it. I mean, you heard somebody screaming on the main stage. I was wondering. I was like, is Zero starting to heat up? He is 24 and 16 out of him. Much better than that game three, and you need it from that guy. Rated. They're trying to set up this pinch on this lookout post. TK have a pretty solid hold right now. Zero trying to find an angle on this guy, Green Tower. There's the pressure for middle, but he has Joe to help him out. Accuracy's in a wide peak. He gets taken down by a nade. Should be a solid break, but a nade finds two. Good attempt by Red Reserve, just laying down behind the barrel. Zero looking over his teammates, so at least they can contest inside the hard point, but just not a ton of cover to work with. But just like that, Red Reserve is just like what we saw in that previous wide hard point. Right, they just keeps fight happening. The hard point yeah. They break the setup and retake control. I mean, we're just like, oh, good hold, TK. Wait a second. Two <laughs> seconds mind. later, Red Reserve just break on in. So still, they've just been hanging on to this lead right around 40 to 50 points the entire game. They haven't allowed TK really to get a solid hold in to make that game close. We're going to head back over to Restaurant as TK do get this scrap time. This will allow, allow Red Reserve to have a man advantage in rotations. So the first person in will be Red Reserve. Scraps finds two. Joe finds another. And well, is Zero going to expect this? For all these guys to spawn up, it looks like it. He has help from Raided as well. A solid hold at Restaurant for Red. Here we go, 60 seconds. And I got to say, going back to that glide bomb from Kenny, for me, that's a turning point in this game. Yeah. When he called in that glide bomb, TK were within 20, 30 points. But because it misses, team kills. That allowed Red Reserve to rebuild their lead. And what could have been a swing for TK to take the lead and start to establish control in the game. But this is now a scary Red Reserve to play against. You, you hear them getting loud on the main stage when they have momentum behind them, when they're all in cruise control in game. They're Europe's best team. They're showing it right here as they go up by 50 points. Yeah, so with 15 seconds left, TK's going to get the garbage time. They're not out of, out of this one. If we look at the scoreboard, a great game from everybody on, on Red Reserve. As rated, he got right back into it. Pulls out that STG just, uh, you know, right around even. Just negative two right now. Scraps is going to back on up. One player going to get in the hill. How will TK decide to break? A lot of pressure in the middle of the map. Rated, he's going to peek this. Gets taken down. Nice team shot out of Team Caliber. Now it's Joe here to follow up. He gets isolated. He gets taken down. But the spawns. Oh, oh it's going to be out. Joe. Joe, fawn, Joe spawns out. It's going to be number seven. Now Sparrow pushing through wide, but maybe a little bit too quick. Rated set up in the back. Now it's going to be Joe. He has a chance to pitch through the middle map. Joe's coming up behind three players here while inside the hard point. Joe finds two. Rated five. It's one. That's enable the hill control in favor of Red Reserve. Now they only need 10 more seconds to close this out. Up a great hole, and this should be it. I think we're going to head to another game five. Is Red Reserve zero and Scraps and Co. start to heat up. And this is what we talked about, right? You win that search and destroy, you get an opportunity to play the hard point map that you picked. And this is the reason why they picked it. They looked so good from start to finish. And we're going to go to a USS Texas. Absolutely. And it was a complete team effort from the members on Red Reserve. We called out, well, I called out Rated maybe a little bit at the beginning of the map. Yeah. He started one and eight, but. He completely turned it around, and you definitely felt his presence towards the later stage of the game, but Zero was the man of the hour for me. When he goes on that spree, it was around positive eight on that time. It's good to see him finding a group here in the series, and just like you were saying, game five, baby. 
over to USS Texas. Yeah, definitely so. And I think as well, too, right? Your Scraps on a new team. Scraps is typically a pretty loud guy. When he gets two to three kills, he's usually loud. And we haven't heard that yet. Zero gets a couple of kills. He starts screaming. Scraps ends like, all right, I'm screaming too, right? I'm going to get pumped up. So that's great to see out of Red Reserve. The stage is now set. Red Reserve forced the game five as we're about to head over to USS Texas. Can TK make the ha magic happen? Once again, or our Red Reserve going to claim the victory here. We're going to a quick break. We'll catch you on the other side. It all comes down to this. Game five, USS Texas between Team Caliber and Red Reserve. This is the map we all wanted to see, and we finally get to both, see both teams battled out here on the battleship. Joe, back-to-back -back game fives for you. How do you see this one playing out? I have no idea. I mean, obviously, TK is very comfortable on it, right? They had a couple of games yesterday where they they were able to win it, especially in a game five, right? They're very comfortable in this situation. Red Reserve, how much practice have they had on it? You know, they played London Dodge yesterday. They were able to make adjustments today, and they won that one. But I'm just thinking both teams, we could have a double sniper setup from both of these guys. You have Kenny, you have Pharaoh, then on the other side, you have Zero, you know, as long or along with Scraps. So just a ton of potential. And Red Reserve is typically 
exactly a team what they love to do you know when they had josh on the roster was smoke out the bomb sites three of them run subs along with rated and then zero would just play the back with a sniper they would play so sneaky inside those smokes set up so many different bomb opportunities i'm excited to watch this one and speaking of zero just had a big game four in the hard point on saint marie his shots obviously on point let's see if he could transfer through to his sniper rifle here as here we go game five about to kick off we're on the battleship uss texas we're starting off with tk on the offensive side speaking of snipers pharaoh has one in his hands see if he can find a first blood over towards this b site and they'll say he's gonna be challenged by scraps they see him doesn't look like it so you have scraps with one you have zero there's a double snipe set up you have pharaoh does Kenny have one as well? Come on, Paradox, show me. No, he doesn't. So you just have one on the side of TK. Smoke's being thrown out towards the A-bomb site. Concussion tossed as well to gain some information. Ferro and Scraps, you see through the X-ray vision, could potentially meet each other here. Joe's got to be careful. Joe. Oh, does he see the tip of his hat? Okay, so they have spotted each other now. Ferro looking to line up the shot. Same with Scraps. I don't know if Scraps saw him. I think Scraps is looking up top, not down low. They are just missing Woo! each other, and he just misses that shot. Scraps going to back on down. Just 35 seconds, though. Nades are coming in. They missed, they missed though. But there's a trade onto a Nable. And as I said, Rated has out that PPSH. They love to play that up. Did he resmoke it? Yes, Did Rated resmoke it? Oh, yep. I loved it. He gets the sniper shot. Pharaoh does connect on the zero. But they hit smoke down on the bomb. Kenny's right there. He's going to see one. He's going to play patiently. Maybe a little too patiently as Joe. He finds two. It's all down to Pharaoh. But the bomb. Currently being defused. He's looking for the free kill, but the objective is being defused. Oh, he oh. misses with the machine pistol. The bomb gets defused, and Ferro dies after. Red Reserve retake the bomb site, and I love Rated saving that smoke grenade for the retake. Yeah, that's what they love to do. All three, or typically two to three of them run PBSHs with smokes, and that's just a, a typical Red Reserve play, and then Ferro right there. He was left in a very tough position. I know chat's probably going wild, like... LOL, he missed an easy <laughs> kill, right? Like, Happens. But what he was trying to do was obviously get that kill and then time it perfectly so that he could look left onto that bomb site, snipe the guy off bomb with 15 seconds left. Then maybe he has an opportunity at clutching it. And it's Joe having a big round one. He finds three kills. Kenny was in a great position as well. Maybe a little too patiently, but you can't necessarily blame him for it. Anyways, into round number two. We got Scraps with the sniper. The Zero have one as well as Joe gets aggressive. Two fall quickly for Red Reserve. It's down to zero and rated. Yeah, so there was the risk that Red took. They threw a smoke on A, and instead of going for the bomb, Joe tried to push lower A. He was caught out. Not exactly sure where Scraps got sniped from. But as you said, 4v2 for zero and rated. Kenny in a very sneaky position. Just trying to find anything he can. It looks like he's going to find that player on bomb. Now you have zero left in a 1v4 with a sniper rifle. Is long. As TK doesn't peek him one by one, he shouldn't be able to win this one. Taking some shots, and yeah, there you go. Kenny, as he pushes through that A-bomb site, he finds the final two kills of the round. So both teams winning their opening defensive rounds. Here we see Kenny finishing off this kill. Round star for him. Easy shots. Zero just has the sniper rifle to work with. Not the best when you're going for these clutch situations. But now we're going to see TK back on offense. See if uh, Pharaoh could find that first blood with the sniper rifle, or if they're going to maybe switch it up. Maybe... Uh, Flick a switch and turn up the aggression coming into this round number three. Yeah, that's it. You know, if you know a team is setting up with a double sniper rifle set up, the way to counter it is to hit them with some aggression. Use those smokes to push up the map and catch those guys off guard. And it looks like we still have that same setup from Red Reserve. Kenny, he's going to smoke out that A-bomb. This should cause a reaction from Red Reserve. Maybe a nade. And yep, there we go. So that is just a distraction, but Rated reads it perfectly, finds accuracy on the B-bomb site. Great play from Rated to open up the round. Early man advantage to Red Reserve, and Kenny, he is at the A-bomb site, but Zero still with the sniper rifle scoped in, waiting for an opportunity to hit the head off Kenny. Doesn't connect there, but he knows he's trapped. Kenny just looking to reposition. He's being sneaky, you see him? <laughs> Trying to find there. an angle. There you go, gets taken out by Joe. So Joe and Rated, just that SMG duo, just roaming the map, almost hits that shot onto a Nable, but doing such a good job. Just taking advantage of Team Caliber the opportunities that they're giving them. Okay, time winding down in the round. TK looking to re-pick re up the bomb, but pharaoh has been spotted across the map. One player on the opposite overlook looks like that was raided, getting some information for his team, and TK got to make something happen now. They don't have a lot of time to work with. 20 seconds, you got to pick up the kills, you got to go for the objective. Maybe they're just going to give up the round and try to pick off these players off streaks. Not exactly sure what's going through their mind, but in the end, it's going to be zero, finishing the kill with the machine pistol as Red Reserve take that round.
Yep, so solid defensive plays from both teams. Who's going to win that first offensive round? That's going to be the big key. That could be the swing round that could decide the game. It's Red Reserve's turn. The last time, a couple of quick kills went down for TK. We'll, we'll see, see if they change things up. Yeah. I wonder. Maybe they uh, swap off that two-sniper setup. I mean, again, Red Reserve very sneaky with their with their offenses and what they like to do. Last time it was Joe who tried to hit low A to find an opening, but that got shut down. Oh, so they're playing around. Oh, no, so they still stick with the double sniper setup. Mm -hmm. On offense, just looking for the picks over towards that A site. Of course, you could plant the bomb in the open and play towards the back ship. Oh, well, Joe's going for it again. He's trying to try and do the same thing he did last round. Does fight around the corner, but I think he did get spotted. Nades come in from Kenny. Raid's going to back on up. He's going to go right back on it, though. There's a nade to watch over him. And if Bomb gets down, that's going to be scary for TK. As you said, double sniper setup. going to be very hard to retake. Let's see how TK decide to approach this. I wonder if they have any utility of their own to try to aid in this retake. But there's zero. Open things up as he picks off Kenny. And now the engagement's going to start to pick up here. It's going to be Pharaoh surging on forward. He's hit this shot against Splice. Earlier in stage two, doesn't hit against zero here, wisely backing down. It's up to TK to make something happen. They have to go for the defuse. Red Reserve just trying to hold back, trying to buy time. Shots not being exchanged by both teams as accuracy falls. This round's all over with 15 seconds remaining. Enable gets taken down, and there's that first offensive round win for Red Reserve. And, and the difference is, when Red Reserve allows the plant, they have utility to work with. They have a smoke grenade to block off that line of sight for the snipers. When TK, they give up the plant, there's nothing. So they have to run into scraps and zero, and they just get mowed down. Exactly that, Joe. Great point to bring up. And it's something that I, I love to see Rated do. I think it was in that, was it the opening round or maybe the second round? Early yeah. on in the game, just blocking off that line of sight. And it makes those defending players, you know, playing for that post my position, it makes them feel uneasy. I feel like you have to get aggressive just to get some information. And Joe having a great game, by the way. Six and one as Red Reserve. They're starting to build a lead up but now by two rounds. Yeah, we talked so much about the snipers, right, and the sort of the setups as Farrell finds first blood onto Joe. But Joe having a great game now, six and two. Well, Raided finds a navel through that smoke. Nobody watching over a navel right there. And now makes it a 3v3. 3v3 with bomb down. Yep. They should know that the objective's over near that bomb site. Both players, both teams now just Looking to find another opening in this round. 50 seconds remaining. Still plenty of time for TK to work with. Accuracy on your screen. Still has a smoke grenade to work with if he wants to go for this bomb plant. He's going to pick the objective back up. No one saw him cross, I believe, but Zero could check here. He's got a stun. He's got a grenade. And there's a grenade from Scraps. It connects. Accuracy was actually running instincts on his class along with Airborne. So that grenade connects. The sniper shot will miss from Zero, but it's a man advantage for Red with only 30 seconds remaining. Yeah, and then Kenny gets picked off by Scraps. Once again, that double sniper setup. Now, for me personally, what you have to do on attack to try and, you know, take advantage of the double snipers if you're TK, you have to get someone in the window, right? Someone in that off or defensive window so you can get angles on both Scraps and Zero. They have to work the bottom middle of the ship, get up top into those positions but they haven't been able to do so. So on offense, TK needs to make some adjustments, and I would love to see some more aggression from Pharaoh. Yes, he has a great sniper, but there's times when he has sort of has that S&D star just take over mentality with a sub. Yeah, sometimes those S&D stars, they just have that instinct, yep. man, where, where they decide now's the right time to push, and they find a way to open up the round, and Kenny's also one of those other players that came up through the search and destroy system, now finds himself as one of the top S&G players in all of World War II. But I think I, I, I agree with you on your sentiment there. TK got to switch something up. Pick up the pace. Try to catch Red Reserve off guard. Because if you keep dropping rounds, well, you're going to lose the series. Red only need two more to close this map out. Yep, there's the switch, right? Pharaoh pulls out the STG. He's going to try and find something. You have aggression bottom middle. There's Kenny and Nabel already on the A site. They're trying to take as much away from these snipers as they can. But Raided finds first blood on the Pharaoh. Here comes the follow-up. Joe on the stairs. Just waiting. Red Reserve playing passively. They know that aggression came in from TK. Enable another falls one. after. Another sniper pick. Just the snipers from zero as well as scraps picking these players apart. And when you're so worried about the snipers, you kind of forget that Joe's just waiting in the wings somewhere along That's with it. Raided, who both have six kills. Yeah, they just play very close to them and close to the angles that the TK members might be hiding. And there we go. Uh, another round win for Red Reserve. How do you stop this double sniper setup that Red Reserve is showing or maybe they shouldn't have played them on this map. Maybe this should have been a map video for TK. Yeah, potentially as a TK, they got to win 
Five straight now to close out this game. Five red reserve only need one more. And I talked about this red reserve lineup while they're in the hard point, right? As they start to gain more and more momentum behind them, they become such a tough team. You remember the run that they had back at Atlanta through that loser's bracket? It was absolutely impressive to watch. It just, just goes to show what this team is capable of when they're firing on all cylinders. Definitely so. And if they can get their CTF a little bit better, they're 0 2 so far in the pro league. You know, even that first respawn, I, I, I think it was a bit of a. Just some misplay, a slow start for Red Reserve. This can be one of the toughest team to, teams to beat in all three game modes. I thought Farrell for a second spotted Joe <laughs> oh, there. Oh, there's oh that's a hit, a hit marker. marker. It's a good shot from Scraps. Fortunately, doesn't find the kill, but Joe has some forward position to work with. And this is what I would like to see TK do a little bit earlier, but Farrell sniffs it out, finds the kill on the Joe. Finally, first blood coming in for TK. They had the man advantage. Now they can progress up forward, oh. but Enable over peaks. He gets picked off by zero, but Kenny, fortunately, he was able to take down Raided. So TK still with the man advantage, as now they get to pick and choose. What bomb site do they want to attack? We get a Pharaoh really quick. See, this is what I wanted. You have to get someone in this position just like this so he can have that angle. As soon as that happens, you're able to find that player sniping in the back. Scrap, so he's working on some streaks on a five Use spree. Use it. I want to see it. I don't know. Not in this position. I'm also you know? a crazy player, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to close the game in style. But yeah, 30 seconds to work with. He has a PPSH. He has a sniper. What can he find? TK, they back down up to their base. I wonder if he's just going to play to keep its progression. Maybe try to find a Probably, kill and yeah. get closer towards that artillery barrage. Just looking around. The bomb will explode. The player who got the plan, I think it was... Um, might have been Accuracy who got this plan off. We'll get some extra points for the bomb blowing up. But still, Scraps, these streaks could wind up winning in the game. I mean, we talk about post plant positionings, right, on that offensive round. Now you don't even have to peek with the sniper rifle. Just have Scraps lay in the back of the map on the glide bomb when you need it. So it's going to be TK. They win their second round. They live to fight another one here on USS Texas. But still a long road ahead for them. No, it definitely is. And they're going to have to keep finding adjustments, you know, finding openings in the red reserve setup. It's just so tough to deal with, right? You, like, you don't want to peek anything because you don't want to get sniped, but you can't play scared. It's such a tough balance to find. Right now, three players for TK combining for six kills. Kenny, Accuracy, and Enable. Joe has more kills than those three players combined. So obviously, that's not what you like to see if you're a TK fan, but they're still alive. They're still here alive in, in the map. So that means there's a chance. TK, of course, a very resilient team. If we learned anything from yesterday's matches, and here you go. Glide bomb called in. Information gained. Going for Accuracy, trying to find the first blood, and he's going to connect. Accuracy falls. Now red reserve. Are they going to pick up the pace? Are they going to swarm in on this A bomb site? No, the bomb's over near B. Not going for the plant just yet. Raided. Just looking over, because you see where his teammates are set up. Not oh. the best position to give him some cover. But still, they have the man advantage, and they have time to work with. No, nope, but Pharaoh and Kenny find kills. Now it's a two versus two. A nice snipe right there from zero on the Pharaoh. Kenny's pushed up on that B site. It's both the sniper pl rifle players left for Red Reserve. Enable and Kenny on TK. Kenny just trying to get out alive. You can see the way he's moving. Enable and that's a huge kill. Scraps. Yep. Huge kill. No further streaks earned from Scraps in a round where you use the glide bomb. I don't think there's any way Zero's going to win this with less than now 20 seconds remaining. His spot's been given up. TK swarm in, they take him out. And if you're TK, you, I think you know that's a big kill on Scraps. Are you maybe worried that there could be an artillery barrage? Maybe, but that's something where Mountain wouldn't even help you out against anyway. So I don't think you're going to see any class switch-ups here for TK, but now they're starting to, to build some momentum behind them. Round by round, they're climbing back into this one. Still some uh, more rounds to go, and the biggest thing here is that you just cannot make any mistakes. You still have some rounds to throw away if you're red reserve. Maybe you try something a little bit aggressive here. Something a little bit different. Throw a different look at them. Yeah, I mean, if you're wondering why TK didn't have, like, Mountain on in that previous round, Scraps is only at 6-3. and three. He was only 5-2 and two when he had that glide bomb, so they're probably thinking he doesn't have 700 points. But probably a plant and def defuse came in, helped him out. But as you said, nothing left for them. What will TK do? It looks like they're finally going for that bottom middle push. You have Kenny set up. But look, what, look at where Zero is. You see that number five? He's so far in the back. I would say it'd be awesome if he was watching the top, top window. I was thinking the exact oh. same thing. You know, Ferro was able to pick off Red Reserve in their previous offensive round. But TK just trying to feel out their opponent, looking at where they want to attack. It looks like they're going to decide to go over towards B. Double knee now coming in on that bomb planner. One connects. Second connects, but no kill made. And he's able to back on down, but now he's going to have to try and replant with no smoke grenade, unless TK still has one. 
Farrell able to spot one. That's Joe. Accuracy finds that first blood. So a big one from him. TK is not out of this yet. Four versus three. 30 seconds left. You have Kenny bottom middle. Bomb Hello. still not planted. There we go. There's raided, but raided found enabled, but the trade was in. And that's going to buy time. Look at the time left in the round. 20 seconds. Red Reserve could just play to kill the bomb planter. Bomb being planted right now. Pharaoh does spot one over near the overlook. The bomb does get planned. That's going to extend the round timer and force Red Reserve to make a move here. RTK going to do it. Are they going to force more rounds here in the search and destroy? Keep in mind, they were down five to one. Now it could be a swing, swing round as they have a chance to bring it to five to four. Zero's been spotted. Actually, just looking to buy time. Oh, he's going to back up. The kill's <laughs> been made. It's a 2v2. Granted, they don't have a lot of time, but there's still a possibility. And I, I don't think they know exactly where Kenny is. He's the big player. There we go. Finds that kill on a zero. Still has a nade left. Going to delay some more time. Scrap some nice shots out of him. Just wait. Still has an opportunity. Yeah, if you're Pharaoh, you're going to have to wait now. There we go. Ju does just that. But I love the adjustments out of TK. Now, is it too late? We're uh, going to find out. Yeah. It all comes down to this upcoming round. Either TK forced that round 11 or Red Reserve take the series. But yeah, TK, they dug themselves in a hole early on. Maybe they waited a little bit too long to, to make those mid-game adjustments. I mean, we, we're seeing the difference in their offensive rounds already. Obviously, they're playing more for that bottom mid control. Just having their subs be in a position where they could find players pushing up over towards the bomb site, catch somebody sprinting. And, you know, we were talking about, I, I think it was Joe earlier on in the game. He had six kills. Yeah, he was, what, six and one. Six and one. Now he's seven and five. He's not having as big of an impact anymore. Pharaoh has a chance here, maybe to find first blood. TK looking to force the round 11. He saw him. Oh, he saw him. Ah, oh, nice shot from Pharaoh. You love to see it. First blood coming in from TK. So there's that first blood. Nate's going to win. Maybe they think he's on the bomb, but he gets Nate. There we go. Scraps finds another kill on accuracy. Accuracy at 2 and 8, not having the best of game in red reserve. The rotation's in. And Abel's not going to know he's to his right. And there we go. After that first blood, the round just falls apart. It's all on Kenny. He has to try and stop the plant. Not able to do so. Raid is just going to back on up. This should be it. Never mind. He does find it's Kenny. One. It's Kenny. He will get taken down as red reserve. They do it. They take down TK in the game five, closing out that USS Texas in what was a very close and contested series. Red Reserve, that's gotta be a good feeling for them as they take down a, a TK who were coming to this one, they were 2-0. Oh. Yeah, definitely so. And, and this is just what they wanted to do. You know, they wanted to prove a point. A scary series, you know they were up 5-1, to one, it goes 6-4. Game one, they got blown out. Game three, they got blown out. Maybe they have to make some adjustments on Flat Tower and London Dodge Hardpoint, but they win both search and destroys. They win that St. Marie Dumont hardpoint. Overall, a great series from the four of those guys. Yeah, absolutely. And Scraps, he had a big impact early on the series, zero as well. When it came down to those later games in the series, it was a complete team effort from this Red Reserve lineup. Everybody pitching in when they needed to the most. Slow start for them in the series, of course, but they rebound. They win it in game five, like I was saying. Once you start getting some momentum behind this lineup, you can see what they're capable of. Oh, definitely so. And I imagine a lot of the other teams were watching that. Probably don't want to play a red reserve on USS Texas. It just like looks so tough to deal with when you have a team who is capable of running smoke strats the way they are, of running a double sniper setup. It's just so tough, man. Yeah, when you have two capable snipers as well, just hitting shots left, right, and center, it's just you peek out for one moment, and that moment could cost you your life. It's got to be frustrating to play against. No, it definitely is. And then just the adjustments, maybe just a little bit too late from TK. They did make it a great game five. They showed some signs. Obviously, their London Dodge hardpoint looks amazing. Their flat tower CTF accuracy had a big game. St. Marie, they were competitive. Uh, again, a new team, two and one, not the worst start for those guys. Yeah, absolutely. And, and speaking a bit more about St. Marie, maybe as teams start to look ahead, match up against Red Reserve, could be a, a map that teams look to, to veto, but congratulations to Red Reserve, an impressive win from over Team Caliber, as now we're gonna throw it down to Jess on the stage for our PlayStation Instant Reaction with Scraps. Thanks, that's right. Going into that match versus Team Caliber, what were you expecting? Um, I wasn't expecting what happened on the London Docks, the first map. I wasn't expecting that at all. We just come out, we come out very slow. Obviously, it was our own fault. We didn't really warm up much before the series, but they come out really hot. They look strong, and I'm glad we got the series. Then after that CTF, what did that do for your confidence, knowing that you had to take two, the, the remaining two games in a row? Um, to be honest, I didn't even think about that once. Like, we was all we were saying is we've got St. Marie. Like, nobody's beats us on St. Marie our points. So it was like, we've got St. Marie. Let's just win this. And then we've got, we've got USS Texas, which nobody's... I'm surprised even... Obviously, Farrell's really good with a sniper, but I'm surprised he played that much. 
And, and what was the key to victory on that last map? Um, just getting picks with the snipers. It was all down to me and Trey getting the picks. Obviously, Joe was going off and so was Reese. so it always helps. But me and, me and, me and Trey getting the first picks with the snipers is the key to victory on that map. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for the interview. This has been your PlayStation Instant Reaction. We'll be right back after this quick break. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're now halfway through day two here at stage two of the Call of Duty World League, presented, of course, by PlayStation 4. Um, we just witnessed another Game 5. Europe doing well in Game 5 so far today. Back-to-back -back Game 5 wins. I'm sure somewhere Phil's jumping uh, for excitement <laughs> and joy, that's for sure. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit about that series. And uh, I think it all really started at the veto process, something that we kind of talked about before the, the game came up. We looked at the maps and we said, well, hold on a minute. This may be favoring a, a little bit more towards Red Reserve. And I feel like if you're TK Chance, you can't let some of those maps go through. To a certain extent, you could definitely make the argument of like, we're going to get better at these maps. Like, we want to play Texas against the team that has the two best snipers to see how good we are, how we stack up. But at a certain point, like, you're just playing with fire. Like, they played them on their two best hardpoint maps, two of their best S&D, if not their two best. And then the Flak Tower is a run back. So I think overall, TK definitely had a good series. Like, that London yep. Docks hardpoint was amazing. But then realistically speaking, like, if you leave that map five open against Scraps and Zero, like, the question was which one of them is going to snipe. Both of them did, sort of thing. Like, 
it's incredibly difficult. And yes, I like the concept of working for improvements, like figuring out holes you have in setups that Red Reserve exposes. For sure. But here, with how tight the competition is, every single map matters, let alone an entire series. And I think TK took it too far. And obviously, we've seen Red Reserve play now twice, uh, once yesterday against Epsilon. And it kind of had the question lingering over them, are they the real deal? You couldn't really tell too much yesterday because we expected them to beat Epsilon. This was a, a much closer game. Uh, are you impressed? Do you still think that the real deal here, Rent? Have they done enough to kind of prove themselves to you? Uh, for this division, they just beat TK, who played amazing yesterday, and they're looking like the real deal as well. So TK take Red to a Game 5 in a series where the maps look like they favored Red heavily. So definitely a lot of shout-out to TK in that match. But sure. I'm definitely thinking Red Reserve is going to continue this trend of kind of being one of the top dogs in this division. Okay, They definitely uh, are looking good, that's for sure. Once again, congratulations to them. Uh, game 5 victory. Uh, but moving on, next game.